course you want to play the guitar and be completely free to find whatever lick or melody wherever you are on the neck. And you want to have an overview that's so strong that you can use this while you're improvising in the middle of a solo. In this video I'm going to give you a strategy and a few solid exercises to help you build that. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. If you want to develop a fretboard overview, then it's important that you really think about what it is you want to achieve. To give a demonstration of some of the things that I think are important, then I'm going to compare jazz to a real language. Because I think it's really a good way of understanding what it is our fretboard overview has to do and how we practice towards that. So if we take a jazz phrase, then you can compare that to a sentence in a normal language. Often when we talk about having an overview of the fretboard, then this is reduced to this very simple idea of just knowing where all the notes are on the neck. But that's actually not enough to really help you once you start soloing. Only knowing the notes of a jazz phrase is the same as looking at a sentence and then only knowing the letters. So you're leaving out the words and then probably you don't really have any idea what that sentence is saying. Knowing the alphabet of a language is not the same as knowing the language. When you see this, your brain is automatically looking for the patterns and trying to find the words. And probably even though I've just written it out as a row of letters, you can already see what it says. That's because your brain is used to thinking in patterns and we actually ignore the letters and we think about the words, the bigger chunks of those letters. And that's what you want to take with you when it comes to fretboard knowledge. You want to learn those chunks and where they are on the neck. So understanding the sentence is about recognizing the words and then reading the meaning of the words, not the letters. The same is true for a musical sentence or phrase. Try to listen to this Charlie Parker lick. Probably the way that you hear this lick is first an arpeggio, followed by really just a stepwise scale motion, but then with a chromatic approach to each of them. So. And if you want to have the freedom to play phrases like this around the neck, then what you need to study is not only where the notes are, but you also need to study where to find phrases like this. So the arpeggios and the chromatic approach patterns that are used in the Charlie Parker lick. Just a quick side note to this, notice that you can only break down the Charlie Parker phrase into sensible words if you actually know what to listen for, what to look for. So you need to have an idea about what the language is. And that's of course the same because if you don't speak a real language, then a sentence written in that language is just going to be a row of letters and not really have any meaning to you. I'm assuming that when you want to be able to find things on the fretboard, then you're already working on playing scales and arpeggios in positions. That's at least a very good place to start. And that's also what I discuss for fretboard overview in some of the videos that I'm linking to in the description of this video. You can use these exercises alongside working in positions with scales and arpeggios. That's at least what I've done and that's also what I tell my students to do. The exercises are also building on top of each other. So you can take the first exercise and work on that and then use that material to help you work on the second and the third exercise. The first really basic exercise that I think you should do for all the scales that you know in all keys and on all strings is to play the scale from the lowest available note and then just up the neck on one string. This is really going to help you just know the scale better and figuring out where all the notes are. And you can immediately take this to the next level by playing the same scale on one string, but then doing it in thirds. So that you have to think a little bit ahead in terms of which notes are there and having a little bit of a better overview. And then you can take that a little further by just playing some basic simple scale patterns, like I'm playing a four note pattern here. One of the most common building blocks in a jazz line is an arpeggio. And as you can see in the Charlie Parker lick, then usually it's going to be a one octave arpeggio. It makes sense that you explore different ways of playing one octave arpeggios along the neck, not just in positions. And to work with this, we can just take a short look at how we can play a C major seven arpeggio and then some different options that we have available. So if I take the C major seven with this C on the, on the sixth string, then we can play one note per string that will give us this arpeggio. We can play the last two notes on one string, then we would have one, one, two. Or we can play two notes on the second string. Or we can play
can play two notes on the first string. And we can actually also play two notes on two strings. So some good exercises for this would be to take just the diatonic arpeggios of a scale and then take one way of playing that arpeggio on the next. So either using the two, one, one, or the one, two, one, one, and then use that to play through the arpeggios. And that will give us three exercises like this. The third exercise is where you take everything and put it together with some music and really start to using it closer to a musical context. So the idea here is to take just a simple phrase and then move it around in different positions and playing it in different places on the neck. And you can do this in sort of a very strict way and just really moving it from position to position. That's definitely useful, especially for just learning your positions better. But you can also be more free about it and then just find different ways of playing it. What you want to keep in mind with this is that whenever you're playing this phrase, focus on how it sounds, how it, how it is to play, because you want to make it so that it's easy to play and also sounds good for the phrase. In some places, some phrases are not easy to, to get to sound good and then you don't really want to spend time on them. First, we need a phrase to move around. Let's take a really simple G minor seven phrase. So the way this is constructed is it's first just an enclosure of the G, so, and then moving up the scale, and then we get a B flat major seven arpeggio. And that's what you wanna keep in mind because that's gonna make it easier to move it around if you know your positions or if you know the neck well, wherever you're trying to play this. The first thing to do is just to move it around positions. And I'm gonna use the Berkeley scale system because I'm really familiar with that. And that has seven positions. And then actually I get a few extra ones because once I start moving up the neck, then some of the lower octaves in the first positions will work higher on the neck once I get up the octave. But you don't have to only stay in positions, even though that's a good exercise. It also makes sense just to explore different ways of playing the phrase where you're shifting between positions. And that really also gives you the freedom to emphasize better phrasing and making it easier to play for your right hand, for instance. And some examples of that could sound like this. And strangely enough, these other versions seem to be the ones that are found within other scale fingering systems, like three notes per string and the cage system. Now that I'm going through the material for this video, one thing that I also want to point out is that even though we're talking about fretboard knowledge and having a solid overview where essentially you can move any phrase anywhere on the neck, probably that's not going to be the thing you want to focus on the most. You don't want to know everything uh, in all possibilities and all positions all the time. What you will find when you do exercises like this is that sometimes there are things that are just easy and more natural to play in some positions than in other ones. And then you actually want to focus on for each position, you should have something that sounds good, is easy to play and is also possible to phrase in a nice way. That's way more important than having the ability to play something that anyway will never really sound good or feel nice to play in all positions. If you want to check out some more information on how to work with fretboard knowledge when it comes to more positional playing, then check out this playlist where I cover different strategies, ways of thinking about it, and also some exercises to really get that into your playing. <laughs>